Hey everybody, Portland's Box and Beekeeper, Chris. Uh, welcome back to He Works Hard for the Honey. I uh, wanted to follow up. You guys saw the video uh, of me installing the two new uh, Russian colonies. So it's been, it's been a week for this one and almost two for the one on my left. Hives one and two now, respectively. Um, so I want to come in. I want to make sure everything's looking okay. Uh, I want to make sure that the queen's laying, that they are pulling in resources, or that they have enough with sort of what I've left in there. Um, so let's crack the top open. I've smoked them a little bit already, and uh, got the feeder on there, and they are up and in it. I'm going to put that to the side for a second. good sign that they are starting to, these frames were blank when I put them in, starting to draw out some comb right here on the wax foundation. some heavier frames that look like they have a good deal of nectar and even some capped honey already. You can see around the sides here. Nope, I'm gonna put that back. if not prepared at all times. We're going to get a little further in here uh, and make sure that we see eggs and hopefully at this point some, some capped brood. I think that they've actually This box down to the one above it. So I'm gonna just get right in here and take some of that wax out. in kind of a hurry so I could see where that could happen. Pull a couple of frames out anyways and I'll get that that kind of crazy comb a little bit later. Alright I see some nectar and pollen here. A uh, little closer to the center than I guess I'd like, but but it does look like they are mostly over this side. It's a little windier than I bet they'd like, which is why <laughs> I think they're flying in my face and letting me know that they're here and that Maybe they don't feel like today is the best day for an inspection. So I'm going to try to be very quick. Oh, beautiful. Here it is a beautiful frame here. It's a great laying pattern. And all of that in the center is capped brood. So they are looking to 
raise their population up fast. You can see they're spreading out a little in the center. And that's all capped brood. So we've got a laying queen here, for sure. I'm so excited by this frame. Um, so generally, with a with a really healthy laying pattern like that, where it's really covering a lot of the frame, um, it just shows a, a, a healthy sort of very feral queen uh, who's going to be able to ramp up the population of this hive very quickly. It's an exciting thing. Uh, very nice to see this quickly in a new hive. I'm going to actually leave this frame out so I have a little room to work. larger larva um, around the center there. Well, and the queen wasn't here too long ago because she's gone around and filled some of the empty spaces with eggs. That's fantastic. Well, and again, some of these frames I've mixed in. Be quick with her, but you can see her there with the blue dot. And let's go put her back. Mm -hmm. The queen doesn't particularly like being out in the sun. So I've found everything I feel like I need to in this hive. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal them back up. And maybe on a less windy day, I'll, uh, I'll plan on getting a little further in. But in the meantime, is a feeder. I've actually got a, uh, a short video sort of peering into this. Uh, if you're interested, it's sort of a mesh sort of gate around the middle with an area underneath that the bees can come up. And then two pools on each side that I fill with uh, sugar syrup. I keep hoping it'll come back if I keep doing that. Um, and the mesh gate around the entrance sort of prevents them from just flying in and kind of having a mass drowning, which I don't know why they do. All right, and this hive was about a week behind. Still got some food in the feeder, which is great. Oh, 
pull this back out. I think this one was a little loose fitting in there. Now let's get in here and make sure that our new queen is laying in here as well. down which you can kind of see some of that wax up here they've been busy uh, you know I feel like my first two years my bees kind of consistently sort of attacked my pets as sort of a vulnerable spot Like I said, it's uh, it's a windier day than I would like, so I think they're just letting me know that they're not having it. And if I were smart, I would listen. Uh, but that's not something I ever claimed, really. I get hit in the head for a hobby, and. I play with stinging insects. It's just, it's beyond me to do smart things, kind of. Let me just move this over and see if I can get a better look at how they're doing. this frame. I'm about one more sting away from putting the hood on. <laughs> I knew they weren't going to be thrilled by the, uh, the idea of me pulling frames out. Well, the other hive was fine though. Everybody, Chris, Portland's Boxing Beekeeper, but you already knew that, didn't you? Um, so I am going to try to just get one or two frames out of here, if I can, and uh, just make sure that we have a healthy laying queen. And I'm going to tuck my shirt in. I'm guessing that you can guess why. Gonna grab at one of these frames here. There's a very good, healthy number of bees here, and I see larvae in there, which is fantastic. Uh, it's great. They're flying in my body, in my hands. Uh, and I don't want to say anything just yet. And we 
we've got some cat brood and larva on this side. And the queen, fantastic. And just like that, she disappeared. Uh, as queens will sometimes do. If you're not careful. And as your queen is of the utmost importance. Let's make sure to take care of her. And if she doesn't like to be in the light, let's keep her out of the light. <laughs> and that's really all I needed to see was that we have uh, two viable hives uh, with healthy laying queens. So I'm going to close this up and I'm going to have you join me oh, that was weird. Stinger didn't stick uh, and I'm going to have you join me over at what is now Hive 5 uh, which is a little split I made off of which was wildly healthy. Um, not only wildly healthy, but was starting to produce queen cells uh, and get ready to swarm. And we can talk more about that, but I had to kind of do this in a hurry before um, my actual physical hive showed up. So uh, I grabbed five frames out of it, made a little nuke and put them in a nuke box. Uh, most of you who've been around um, for a while have seen me start colonies by nukes. Um, I started sort of a colony from my own nuke this time. Uh, and I will have you guys meet me over there. Hey everybody, welcome back to He Works Hard for the Honey. I'm Chris, Portland's Boxing Beekeeper. And uh, I was doing some work in this hive and uh, if some if you follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram you saw that I, I had a bad time with a hive last week uh, and it was this one this hive sucks like badly it takes all the joy out of beekeeping we got no surplus honey from them last year and uh, just at the slightest breeze um, 15 of these guys were bouncing off of my net here um, and so I decided to uh, grab the video camera and talk a little bit uh, because yep yep uh, and so I decided to grab the video camera because we have had hot hives here um, as those of you <laughs> Uh, can remember and I, I will probably repost our uh, our horror movie uh, trailer um, for our uh, our hive from season two but I'm um, gonna get in here and talk a little bit about uh, sort of what to do with a hot hive uh, like this yep yep um, sort of in an urban area here because my other hives I mean are active um, they don't do this and that's <laughs> a lot of you who, who've watched for a while may know I don't usually suit up it kind of I, I feel clumsy in the hive when I'm wearing gloves um, you know my hives have have typically been pretty gentle and I feel like you know, if they sting me, that's kind of their way of letting me know it's it's time to go, and so I, I want to be sort of in tune with that. Um, and I, I was just, I, I, I bought this um, for our interview series so that we could um, 
<laughs> have guests and not have them sort of worry about getting stung. Um, and as I was getting ready to open this hive up, I just uh, feel my blood pressure go up and uh, thought maybe this wouldn't be such a bad idea. Um, so I hope there's nobody just on the other side of this fence. It's usually a pretty, uh, pretty open space. I hope none of these bees get up this suit. And here we go. Um, yeah, that was from a car door next door closing um so you can imagine if i had not been wearing a suit um how that would have gone and still gone um and so really what what i've got to do here is i got to get in here and i got to find the queen and kill her uh, that's how we deal with the hive like this. That's just how I be, folks. Don't mess with me. Um, <laughs> every bee that's ever stung me is dead now. That's how I roll. Um, And so, by finding and killing the queen, um, it's awfully early in the year, but I am probably going to take a, a more docile queen from another hive and insert her uh, into this hive uh, a few days after I've killed the queen. Man, this is even worse than it was last year. Uh, maybe they're just not... used to it you know me coming being in here but uh yeah this hive sucks I cannot say it enough um, and again you guys who uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook uh, I had a really rough time and all I did was take the uh, take the feeder off this hive and uh, I got stung probably 15 or 20 times um, it was not a good day 